Greetings, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be part 11 of the fire series. This is the New Testament. And for believers, fire is going to be a good thing for the most part. Just remember, the three Hebrews that were cast into the furnace under Nebuchadnezzar, they weren't touched by the fire. Just remember, the flood of Noah, it was the salvation of Noah and his family. It was judgment upon the wicked world, but the flood of Noah was. It was, it was salvation for Noah. I mean, let's face it. Uh, just a quick note. I have noticed that my comments on other channels are completely censored. When I go to the sites on my when I'm signed in to my YouTube channel, I can see my comments, but when I go to another computer where I'm not signed in, let's say a computer at work or at school or library or something or or other people and they'll say, I don't see your comments anywhere. For example, those of you that know who Rob is, I left a comment on one of his um, videos and mentioned it to somebody, and they looked, and they says, I don't see your comment anywhere. And it wasn't there when I looked at it from another uh, computer that I wasn't signed in at. And then there's this guy named Dr. Brown. I left several comments on his thing where he's, oh, the Noahide laws and the Talmud, he's defending it, claiming that he's a believer. I don't know what he believes in. Oh, that's right, Yeshua HaMashiach, whoever that is. But um, my, none of my comments show up. And I was wondering, I mean, it's been a couple weeks. I've noticed nobody's been responding to my comments. So... It's just not even worth commenting on other videos anymore. I mean, my comments are not showing up. So evidently, I'm going to have to uh, possibly start another, uh, oh, I don't know, email address. So, so uh, that's why I'm not commenting on any other videos. So if you see Rob, you can mention it to him. Um, if he asks, if anybody asks, you know, I'm not mad at anybody. It's just, you know, it's just not worth commenting anymore. So, all right, let's go to the New Testament and read where fire is going to be good for believers. Oh, uh, let's see. Matthew chapter three, verse one. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Esaias, that's Isaiah, um, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. And the same John had his raiment, that's clothing, had his raiment of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Can you imagine uh, John the Baptist walking into a Baptist church, a Southern Baptist church, or an independent Baptist church? They'd run him out. You know, how dare you come in here wearing camel's hair clothing and a leather girdle and and you know you don't have a suit and a tie on how dare you come into the house of the lord and and dishonor him well what did jesus have to say about john the baptist well in luke chapter 7 verse 26 uh he's discussing some people about John the Baptist. And they said, But what went ye out to see? A prophet? Yea. Now he's talking about John the Baptist here. 
But what went ye out to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and much more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before my thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. For I say unto you, now this is Jesus speaking, for I say unto you, among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. Among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. But he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. And all the people that heard him and the publicans justified God being baptized with the baptism of John. Yeah, they were baptized with the baptism of repentance. And they weren't talking about being repent, repenting of their unbelief. No, that's a lie. And the, uh, Matthew 3 and verse 4. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan, and were baptized... Excuse me. All right, uh, verse 6. And were baptized of him in Jordan, the river Jordan. And were baptized of him in Jordan confessing their sins. See, when they repented, they were confessing their sins, not repenting of their unbelief, as some famous internet preacher uh, teaches. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees, now who are the Pharisees and the Sadducees? Well, there are two different denominations of the Jews. The Pharisees believed in the oral traditions that Jesus condemned over and over and over. It's codified in a book called the Talmud, which is basically an encyclopedia. And then you got the Sadducees. They were the temple, the, the people that basically ran the temple and did the temple sacrifice. They only believed in the first five books of Moses, which they call the Torah. You're talking Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. The book of Leviticus gives you the temple worship. The Pharisees believed in the resurrection and in angels. The Sadducees did not because it wasn't in the first five books of the Bible. So... But just remember, Pharisees and Sadducees were two different denominations of the Jews. All right, so, but when he, John the Baptist, but when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers. Ooh, he's not very, he's not being very politically correct now, is he? O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth, therefore, fruits, meat for repentance. And as he's not talking about bringing apples and oranges and bananas. No. He's talking about their works. Bring forth, therefore, fruits, meat for repentance. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit, good fruit is hewn down and cast into the Fire? Oh, yeah. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. People, I'm telling you, good fruit, good works, 
You know, people will say, oh, if you do good works, you're earning your salvation. They even have a name for it. They call it Lordship Salvation. Well, guess what, people? Good works are proof of what you believe. You know, but they want to turn, but the devil and his children want to turn that the other way around and say, oh, if you do good works, you're earning your salvation. But John says, therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Now, who are you going to believe? Somebody that Jesus said uh, he was the greatest prophet that was ever born of a woman, and I'm paraphrasing. Or do you want to believe a TV preacher? You could take your pick. I'm going to go with Jesus and John the Baptist. But, hey, that's just my opinion. Verse 11, John says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Now, in verse 10, it says, Every tree that doesn't bring forth good fruit is going to be cast into the fire. That's not good. That's not good, right? Well, that's what the, the unbelievers and, are going to get. But here it says, He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost, Christ. Christ shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Now, obviously, these are not the same things. You've got... Trees being cast into the fire, and others, the Holy Ghost, being baptized with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Now just remember, the three Hebrew children were cast into the furnace of fire. They weren't hurt. They weren't burned up. Remember that. So Christ is going to baptize believers with the Holy Ghost and with fire. What kind of fire? Well, that's what this study is all about. Verse 12, whose fan is in his hand? Well, you know, in um, medieval times, and still today, they had a thing called a bellows. It was like a, a fan. You'd build a fire, and you'd pump air into the fire to get it to burn hot. Well, that's what it's talking about here. Uh, whose fan is in his hand? You know, they're fanning the fire. Give it more oxygen so it burns hotter. Whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Now, what's a chaff? The chaff is the stuff around the wheat kernel. Uh, it's fluff. You can't eat it. Verse 13 then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him, or allowed him. Then Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him, and lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So the point of all this is, believers are going to be baptized with fire, the Holy Ghost and with fire. Now, in Mark chapter 9, verse 47, Jesus says, And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire, where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Now, listen carefully. Verse 49. For everyone, everyone, shall be salted with fire. For everyone shall be salted with fire, and every sacrifice shall be salted with salt. Salt is good. But if the, law, uh, but if the salt 
have lost his saltness, wherewith will ye season it? Have salt in yourselves, and have peace one with another. Yeah, if salt loses its uh, salty taste, what good is it? I mean, what are you going to put it on your food for? It's useless, right? All right, let's go to Luke, the book of Luke, chapter 9. Oh, I guess verse 51. And it came to pass when the time was come that he should be received up, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers before his face, and they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. And they did not receive him, because his face was though he would go to Jerusalem. So I guess evidently he went into a village of the Samaritans, and uh, they wouldn't welcome him with open arms. And they rejected him, right? Verse 54, And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, wilt thou that we command fire? Lord, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, even as Elias did? And that was Elijah. Elijah called down fire from heaven a couple times. I did a study on Elijah. You can read about it. He's going to return one day and confront the um, false prophet. Oh, yeah. So they're saying, uh, Lord, you, you want us to bring fire down from the sky and burn them up? Just like Elijah did? That's the Bob translation. Verse 55, but he, Jesus, but he turned and rebuked them and said, Ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of. Ye are not what manner, ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of. For the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. See, Christ came to save, not to destroy. And they went to another village. All right, let's go to Acts chapter 2. Now remember, John the Baptist said that we would be, believers would be baptized with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Now, I've read this in a previous part of the fire series, but uh, let's do it again. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. You shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost and with fire? Hmm. Is this a fulfillment of that? I think so. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when... This was noised abroad. The multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? And they were... Um, you know, they, they were speaking in their own languages. That's what they meant by tongues. They're not talking about going to a Pentecostal church and slithering on the floor speaking gibberish that nobody can understand. I mean, that's not what they're talking about. People, you know, uh, from different countries, they, they could understand what they were saying. 
So, all right. Uh, I guess we can read the whole chapter, huh? And how hear we every man in our own tongue where wherein we were born. Parthians. Do you know the Parthian Empire was uh, over in the area of modern-day Iran? And they were contemporaries and adversaries with Rome. Matter of fact, uh, the Rome, Rome didn't mess with the Parthians from what I understand. So, you know, uh, I don't know. It's um, very little is mentioned in the history books about the Parthians. And um, one guy, I was studying his, some of his stuff. He said that the wise men that came to Herod, that went to Christ when he was born in the manger, that brought the gifts, he says they were most likely from um, Parthia, the Parthian Empire. And, you know, just he doesn't think it was just three wise men that showed up. He thinks they had a, um, a caravan, probably of, you know, some troops and stuff. And Herod was, you know, um, why didn't Herod snatch these wise men and, and do something to them? Probably because they had, maybe had a small army with them. I don't know. That kind of makes sense, so. So you had Mar Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia and Pontius and Asia, uh, Phrygia and Pamphylia, I don't know, in Egypt and in parts of Libya, about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God and they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one another, What meaneth this? And others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And Joel's one of the Old Testament minor prophets, right? Verse 17. This is what Joel said. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. And all my servants and all my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy, prophesy, they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. People, let me tell you something. If we're living in the last days, and I may not see it, I'm kind of older, but, you know, those of you that are in your 20s and stuff, 30s, you might see it. When you see the sun turn to darkness and the moon and the blood, it's getting close. It's getting close. You'll know. I, I hate these... Uh, pre-trib rapture liars that say, ah, oh, well, the rapture could happen any minute, any second it could happen. No. The Bible tells you the sun's going to be turned to darkness and the moon and the blood before that great and notable, notable day of the Lord come. There's not two and a half comings of the Lord or two comings or three comings or whatever. The, you know, the Lord comes once at the end of the tribulation. That's it. The day of the Lord and the day of Christ is the same day because Jesus Christ is Lord. And they want you to think that, no, the day of the Lord and the day of Christ is two different events. Thus, they deny that Jesus Christ is Lord. No, Jesus Christ is Lord and the day of the Lord and the day of Christ is the same event at the end of the tribulation. And if you want more information on that, I'll prove it to you. God willing. 
The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And what's that name? That name is Jesus, who is the Christ. They, you, you ever notice that the Judaizers hate that name? They hate that name. Verse 22, ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, not Yeshua HaMashiach. Jesus of Nazareth, the man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know, him being delivered by the determinant counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. For David speaketh concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover also my flesh shall rest in hope. Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Men and brethren, let me speak freely, uh, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher with, with, uh, with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God hath sworn with an oath to him, that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. And seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. Now, I, I did a Bible study on um, this very topic. Uh, if anybody's interested, you know, where did Christ go for the three days that he was dead and buried before he was resurrected to go to the father he went down to to, to uh, Abraham's bosom so if you're interested let me know and that's what they're talking about here verse 32 this Jesus hath God raised up whereof we are all witnesses therefore being by the right hand of God exalted and having received of the father the promise of the Holy Ghost he has shed forth this which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized. Now these are believers. He's not telling them to repent of their unbelief. These people are believers. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of unbelief? No. Be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about three thousand souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking of bread and in prayers. 
and fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles, and all that believed were together and had all things common. That's what they mean by communism. They had all things common. If somebody was hungry and somebody had a lot of food, they got fed. They shared. They shared equally. That's communism. On, on this earth, the only thing that's communism is ants and bees. Uh, I'm not talking about uh, uncles and ants. I'm, I'm talking about little insects that live underground, right? And sold their possessions of good and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. Boy, that's, we could take a lesson from the Old Testament. I mean, the, uh, the beginning of the, the spirit-filled New Testament church, huh? Praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. All right, let's go to Romans chapter 12, verse 18. Paul writes, If, if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place for wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, now we're talking about our private enemies. We're not talking about God's enemies. There's a difference. I'm not going to do anything nice for God's enemies. I'm talking those that we've offended personally. Um, you know, sometimes just people rub you the wrong way, right? Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in doing so, thou shalt heap coals of fire. For in doing so, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Now we're getting to the good part. All right, turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal. In other words, I can't talk to you so much about spiritual things because you're carnal, you're fleshy, uh, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. For ye are yet carnal. For whereas is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye, net, are ye, yet, uh, are ye not carnal? Who then is Paul? And who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. I have planted. Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. You know, and that's the problem, people. I, I would love to teach deep, meaty things in the Bible, but you just, people can't take it. Most people cannot take it. It's terrible. So you teach what you can and I don't know, what can you do? Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one and every man shall receive his own reward according to his labor. Oh, okay. Did you know we're going to give, be given rewards for our works, for our labor in the Lord? Yeah. And then there's people, like I said, they'll tell you, they'll, they'll call you Lordship Salvationists. Oh, yeah, you're trying to earn your salvation by doing good works. 
Those people are devils. They're devils. You know, if if you're if you're doing good works to be saved, you got the wrong idea. But if you're doing good works because of the fruit of the spirit, you're on the right track. Uh, let's see. Verse 9. For we are labors together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. Husbandry has reference to um, a guy that would keep a vineyard or a bunch of plants. Verse 10. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon his this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. Now, fire is not going to burn gold and silver and precious stones, but it's going to burn wood, hay, and stubble. Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it. What day? The day of the Lord. Because it is revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Every man's work. And that's you ladies too. Verse 14. If any man's work abide, abide, uh, what, what does that mean? If all your works are put to the fire and anything's left, that's what it's talking about. If any of your works abide after the fire, listen carefully. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. But if any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved but he himself, sh uh, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. You see, even though all your works might get burned up, you're still going to be saved. You still be can be saved if you're saved. You just, I guess, you won't have any rewards. That's kind of how I see it. But you know, not having any good works. Bad idea. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. You know, I always wondered how people that are saved could drink and smoke cigarettes and then they get cirrhosis of the liver they get cancer uh, emphysema copd and they die horribly is this is this why if any man defile the temple of god him shall god destroy for the temple of god is holy which temple ye are let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. Yeah, just like evolution. The wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. Verse 20. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Vain means worthless. The Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Therefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. Whether Paul, or Apollos, or Cephas, or the world, or life, or death, or things present, or things to come, 
all are yours, and you're Christ's, and Christ is God's. All right, let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I'm sorry, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 1. I love this chapter. I love it. Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus under the church of the Thessalonians and God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Thessalonia was a city in Greece. Grace unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We are bound to give thank uh, we are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth, groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth, so that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure. See, the, the church had patience and faith in persecutions and tribulations. Boy, you don't hear that taught on uh, any of the TV preachers, do they? Do you? No, no, no. Verse 5, which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which ye also suffer. Boy, when's the last time you heard that read? that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which ye also suffer, seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, in flaming fire taking vengeance on them, that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power, when he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. What day? The day of the Lord, the day of Christ. Wherefore also we pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, not Yeshua HaMashiach, that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and ye in him according to the grace of all our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen to that, right? All right, let's hit the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, verse 1. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. See, Christ created everything. He did. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Now, in uh, Colossians 1.16, it says, For by him were all things created, that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Do you know that you were created for him? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you were. So... Maybe we should do the things that he wants us to do, right? Uh, let's see. Verse, okay, Hebrews 1, verse 4. Let's go back to Hebrews. 
being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance attained a more excellent name than they. For under which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Now we're talking about the only begotten. Now we're talking about the only begotten son of God. When you read Genesis 6 and tie that with Job 38, angels are called sons of God. But there's only one only begotten son of God. There's a big difference. I mean, after all, who was God? Uh, who were the father of the angels? Who was the father of Adam? I mean, let's face it. Oh yeah, the evolutionists will say, "Oh, Mother Earth, Mother Earth," but they don't want to talk about God the Father. All right, Hebrews one verse five. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, "Thou art my son; this day have I begotten thee." And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, And let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels he saith, Who maketh his angels spirits, and his ministers a flame of fire. Ooh. Who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire, but unto the sun he saith, Thy throne, O God. See, the sun is God. But unto the sun he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, God, in the beginning, hath laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. They shall perish. Oh yeah, they're going to be burned up one day. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they all shall wax old as doth a garment. And as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed, but thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits, sent forth to minister to, uh, for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Do you know that the angels were meant to be ministering spirits? And what does minister mean? It means to serve. They're sent to serve those that are going to be heirs of salvation. That's what the angels were created for. Maybe that's why um, Satan didn't want that. You know, maybe that's why he rebelled. Maybe he was like, I don't want to serve these people. I'm, I'm the anointed cherub. I'm... I'm more powerful and greater than they are. Maybe they should serve me. I don't know. I don't know. All right, let's, boy, we could read Hebrews chapter 11. You should read the whole thing by yourself. Um, I've already gone 40, you know, boy, almost 50 minutes, and I'm, I'm, I'm still not done. I guess this is going to be... Um, Probably two more studies. All right. Uh, Hebrews 11, verse 20. By faith, this is called the faith chapter, by the way. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith, by faith Jacob, when he was a dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning on the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. By faith Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents, because they saw he was a proper child, and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season." 
esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians, a saying to do, were drowned. By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. By faith the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. And what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah, of David also and Samuel and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought Who, through faith, subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Boy, we need that today, don't we? Women received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Do you know that there are different resurrections? Some are better than others? Oh, yeah. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, Moreover, of bonds and imprisonment, they were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute. Boy, you don't hear that on the uh, uh, TBN channel, do you? Being destitute, afflicted, tortured, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise, God having provided some better things, better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. All right, let's take a look at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 24. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. See that ye refuse, see that ye refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth, how much, uh, I'm sorry, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth, but now hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. See, people, that's in, the, that's in Revelation. Uh, by the, the book, Revelation says that uh, the heavens are going to be shaken. Maybe we should take a look real quick. Oh, uh, how about Matthew 24, 29? Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. Didn't we read that in Acts referencing Joel? Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars, stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Oh yeah. Revelation chapter 6 and 13. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. So, yeah, 
in Revelation 6, 13, it says, And the star, stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. Verse 14, And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. All right, back to Hebrews 12, verse 26. Whose voice then, then uh, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I will shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word, yet once more, signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken, as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore, we, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. For our God is a consuming fire. Uh, what was it? Little Richie or whatever said a whole lot of shaking going on. Yeah. And if you remember when that first came out, you're old. All right, let's go to the book of James. Uh, we'll make this quick. Verse 5. James 3, verse 5. Even so the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire, fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. Didn't Jesus say that by our words we'd be justified and by our words we'd be condemned? Oh yeah, he sure did. The, the tongue is a world of fire and not good fire. Uh, verse 7, For every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeding blessings, blessing and curses, my brethren, these things ought not so to be. Doth a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Uh, yeah. Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either of vine figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Who is a wise man and, and endureth with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. Um, but if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. But, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Well, everybody, I think I'm going to close this out. It's been an hour, and uh, we'll continue, I guess, part 12, uh, finish up the good part of fire for believers, and then I guess part 13 will be, um, well, fire as in the judgment of the end of the world. So all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. And that's Jesus who is the Christ in his precious name. Amen. All glory and praise and blessings to him. Amen.